Hi Gemini, welcome. So Gemini, this is going to be your August reading and I am doing a two-part reading. So the first portion is going to be the general spiritual messages and the second portion is going to be the you versus them love reading. If you're only interested in the you versus them, feel free to click the timestamp in the description box and it'll take you straight to it. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. So Gemini, you have the card of Taurus that may be in your chart and or you may be dealing with a person or people who have that in their chart or it's just simply the influencing vibes. So this is all about practicality, staying grounded, staying down to earth. But it also talks about satisfaction and indulgence and letting yourself do a little bit of pleasure seeking during this time frame, which who doesn't want that kind of message, you know, <laughs> permission to have pleasure. Um, <laughs> But let's see what else. Also a very sensual, sexual energy for those of you um, looking to, you know, spark your intimate life. You also have the Ten of Wands here, which is kind of a heavy vibe. So kind of a very dense, like burdensome energy crowning this, which is really interesting. So you may actually find it difficult at times. Um, say if you're under a lot of stress as well, Gemini, to feel connected to your partner or feel connected to your libido in general, even if you don't have a partner. Um, or maybe it gets in the way of you truly feeling as much happiness and pleasure as you could currently have. Um, in your life, right? Because often the thing that keeps us away from being happy isn't others. It's our own stinking thinking, you know? <laughs> it's our own inability to be present and grateful for what we currently have. But there could be outside stress and influence going on as well that is impacting that. But we will see. So let's see what the Osho Zen has to say. Ooh, my legs vision about this for you, Gemini. You have the card of tuning in, which is all about kind of going within, clearing your energy. If you meditate, you know, I always encourage meditation. I, I'm a daily meditator, but, and it's changed my life. But even just here and there, you know, taking 10, 15 minutes to clear your energy will do you a lot of good, Gemini. Um, there also could be messages coming through your intuition. I heard clairvoyant. I don't know if I have a Gemini or a few of you who have your own gifts or clairvoyance. But And then there's an encouragement to be playful, which is super interesting because this also came out in the Aries reading. Some of you could be connecting with an Aries as well, and if so, check out their reading. Um, their reading was way serious, okay? Uh, it felt very serious, um, which is interesting because then when I went to meditate to get into your vibe, Gemini, it was a much more... I actually got the word... I got the word. I got the song Celebrate. Celebrate. <laughs> so kind of like a totally different vibe. Um, so if you have an Aries friend, like go help them out, be there for them, lighten them up, you know, like when you're shining bright, that's the best time to shine that light on other people say. All right. King of wands or a Taurus, by the way, or a Taurus friend in particular, but okay. King of wands, queen of cups, six of pentacles, the devil and the eight of cups. So I feel like right now, Gemini, your confidence may be getting a little bit of a boost and it's almost kind of like letting bygones be bygones, letting go of things that have been weighing you down, okay? Um, being more open in your energy and not fixating so much on the things that have left you or left your life or the person for some of you that may have left your life because I do feel there was a fixation here on something that has already exited the scene, okay? And now this could also be someone fixating on you if you've left the scene in their life, but take it as it resonates. I feel it coming more from your energy, but it's like a sense of like, yeah, finally getting in this space of being confident to let go of that, okay? So let's go a little bit deeper. Four of Swords and the Seven of Swords. Queen of Swords or another song coming through. Ooh, baby, I love you. Let's 
Oh, so. baby, I think I love you from head to toe. I don't know. That was random. It's from maybe the 80s. <laughs> maybe somebody loves you from head to toe. I don't know. Um, so in the heart space here, Gemini. See, now I'm not super crazy about this. Now some of you, it's a sense of like... Hold on a second. I don't know if like your mind is playing tricks on you or you're having like interesting dreams or uh, I heard sneaking suspicion for some of you, but it's a sense of like, there's two different messages. Some of you are getting messages in the dream state that are kind of shadowy in nature hidden things, suspicions, things of that nature. And then like when you wake up, it, you know, it does a number on you or it takes you time to process it for those of you who remember your dreams. Um, but there's a reminder here that the dream state is only ever a reflection of your consistent mood while you're awake. Meaning like if you have a lot of fearful or paranoia dreams, it's likely because there's an active vibration of fear or paranoia or worry in your wake state and your dreams are a representation of that. They're showing it to you so that you can adjust your focus to something that serves you better. It's kind of like a wake up call, you know what I mean? Um, so not to over interpret the details of any dream because it's not about the details. It's about the vibration of the dream, the mood in the dream. And I don't know, there's a weird message about that. Now for others of you, it's nothing to do with the dream state. There could actually be suspicious stuff going on, <laughs> you know, at night, but you know, there's an awareness around this. Meaning you could be the one doing the suspicious activity, I'm just saying. Um, but it could be someone that you're connected to. And if that is the case, then it may be that you're getting some clarity, okay? Or some sort of insight around this that helps you to feel more confident or in control what is the seven of swords the hermit some of you virgo energy the hangman yeah there's something there's some sort of truth here right that's coming to light that makes you go, hmm, you know what I mean? Like it causes, it causes a, a pause, right? Something to self-reflect on, something to think about, okay? But I feel you coming to peace with whatever this is. But it's after doing a lot of either inner reflection about this or you know, soul searching around this even. It could have been fixated on it for a while. And for the most part, you're at peace with it, but sometimes at night it bleeds into the dream state or something, which lets you know that you've not truly 100% detached yourself from it. Otherwise it wouldn't be showing itself to you in, in the wake state or the dream state. So there's a little bit more to be known about this yet, or to be learned here yet, before you can fully feel at ease. I hope this is making sense. Let's see what else. Why does that song keep coming through? Ooh, baby, I love it. Yes, there's that insight. Here's that new information here. 
So there is a completion here. There is the missing puzzle piece showing up here. And yet there's this heaviness, okay? Something that's supposed to be a blessing is feeling like a burden for whatever reason. And maybe it's because it's not necessarily what you envisioned for yourself, but sometimes spirit has a bigger plan. And that doesn't mean something didn't work out. It just means wait longer because it's in the process of working itself out. Like we want to take score too soon in life and say, you know, this didn't work out for me. So no, it's not true that all things work out in the end, but you're not at the end yet. You know what I mean? Like the story's still going. So don't take score too soon because there is something that is working out for you that you may not have the full picture of just in this moment okay but you're getting puzzle pieces or insights some of it through the dream state some of it through the wake state uh, that's helping you to gain the knowledge to have the expansion that you need but <clears throat> don't get too caught up in overthinking oh tell a gemini not to overthink dana yeah that's not gonna happen okay <laughs> As a triple error sign myself, <clears throat> I get it. We have to analyze everything, right? So there's like this anal analyzing going on. But the but the if you remember, the overall encouragement here was to tune in, meaning quiet your mind for a little bit and be a little bit more light-hearted if you can to ease some of this burden. Because there does seem to be a repeated pattern here of like making progression, like kind of letting something go and then getting fixated on it again. And then moving away from that, you know, feeling at peace and then, ref then doing some sort of reflection, which, which is helpful in some ways, but in some ways it takes you backwards. And I heard reliving the past or something sometimes it helps to replay things in our minds so we can get different perspectives but be careful with that because sometimes that turns into fixations and if it's pulling you away from appreciating what's in your present now moment it has become a fixation so let's see what the guidance is then for it says reach out. We know you're reaching out right now for help due to the current situation. Support is as much about the physical act of accepting help as it is about the emotional benefits and learning that it's okay to accept support however it's presented to you. So <clears throat> this is a reminder to you, Gemini, that if you need support, reach out. There, there's always support available to you, whether that be through your intimate connections, your friends, your family, but always on a spiritual level, there is support as well. It's just quiet your mind and that so that you can hear it. Um, but yes, so wow, super interesting start. And now we're going to go into the you versus them portion of the reading and get a bit more detailed around the love life. So I'll see you there in just a minute. And welcome back. So Gemini, this is going to be the you versus them portion of the reading. I'm going to go back and forth between you and the person you may be connecting with. Um, and just keep in mind that it's a general reading, so the roles may be reversed. Feel free to flip the message if you need to. And let's go ahead and get into it. So overall crowning energy is the card of expansion and the card of wisdom. So this is a very enthusiastic, optimistic, expansive, kind of lucky energy. It's encouraging you to explore new potentials. And what's interesting is that it's almost paired with its exact opposite, which is this very disciplined, structured, um, grounded energy, which encourages to kind of stick with what you know. So I don't know if this is you know, you showing up as this very expansive energy and your partner being of this more practical energy or if this is both the duality within you, but that is what's crowning the reading. So let's go further and see what the angel card is for you, Gemini. For Gemini. I don't know 
know what this last full moon did, but holy cannolis. <laughs> like, um, I feel kind of like drained almost. I don't know if any of you are feeling that way after the super moon, but yeah. Okay, so you have the Nine of Cups, they have the Sun, both beautiful energies. This is talking about blessings, pleasure, satisfaction. This card is talking about optimism, happiness, connecting with self. Both of them really awesome energies. So I feel like you and your person may both be in the space where maybe things are going well for you or you're just having a moment of gratitude and you seem to be on the same wavelength. Um, whether you're connected physically or not. So let's see what the recent past energy is, what led up to the now, and then we're going to look at how you think and feel towards them, how they think and feel towards you, and the most likely outcome. So you have the Five of Pentacles in the recent past. Two of Cups, Queen of Pentacles. Okay, we can't take all of those. Uh, the lovers, which is your energy, but I will take note of these. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm actually going to take note of this. Too. So, Gemini, if you had been left in the dark, you are not going to be left in the dark much longer. <laughs> because I caught this in the spiritual or the general part of the reading. That there was some sort of untruth or something hidden here or suspicion. And it's to deal with a commitment or a relationship um, and movement or travel. And there's the truth coming out. And that's the second time I've seen it. So there's clarity coming in in a situation where you didn't once have clarity. And it's related to commitments or a relationship. And it's allowing you to move forward. So that's a side note almost. But yeah. So here you are, Gemini, <clears throat> getting more grounded, feeling more um, maybe in tune than you have been. You have the soulmate card as well as your card here. So could have been feeling more in tune with your partner or with this person, you know, if this is your partner. And just feeling overall successful, you know, uh, feeling like things are going well for you after a period where maybe things weren't going so well. Some of you may feel that you've met your counterpart or you've met your soulmate. Um, but let's see what's going on in this person's energy. The Nine of Pentacles. The Sun. Well, oh my goodness gracious. The storybook right here. King of Cups, Three of Wands, Eight of Swords, Three of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles. Whoa, oh, excuse me. Left to God. <laughs> okay, so this person has also been in the space of like getting grounded, becoming more self sufficient, feeling more connected with their emotions, with their happiness, um, looking towards the future. And yet there's still a little bit of trepidation here, some stress going on in this person, especially when it comes to connections or this connection for some of you. But yet, there's this huge commitment here, okay? Or this person feeling a sense of commitment and ultimately wanting to lay the foundation or build or maintain the foundation of this commitment, um, especially if it's with you, Gemini. So I feel like this person is, you know, willing to put up with the stress or at least they have been in the past in order to see something stay together or come together. So let's see what's going on in the now and how you perceive each other. How does Gemini see this person? The Nine of Cups, the Death and Rebirth, and the Wheel of Fortune. So a lot of you see this person as the star, you know, Aquarius Scorpio energy here for some of you. But as wish fulfillment, and at the same time, an ending right here, or some sort of big transformation. This person may have gone through a lot of changes, 
Um, you know, they may have had a lot of karmic lessons that they needed to learn, or there might have been karma between the two of you. Um, but ultimately landing on the Nine of Cups, which is like satisfaction, right? So I feel like you get a lot of satisfaction out of the connection, or there's a sense of satisfaction coming out of the situation, okay? Um, some of you may have wanted to heal something with this person, say after a break or an ending, um, and because it would make you feel satisfied or them is the reasoning, but let's see what this person's energy is like. How is this person viewing Gemini? Five of Pentacles. Okay, all of a sudden I have George Michael. Wake me up before you go, boy. I think that's George Michael. Not sure. All right, Temperance. Four of Wands. So I feel like this person, Gemini, you know may have wanted to give to uh, the connection, um, but there's some like reprioritization happening here when it comes to relationships and their own stability. I feel like this person may have also been in a space where they weren't able to give what they wanted, and now there's an equalizing coming up where they are now able to give what they could not give in the past maybe, um, as I feel like this person is feeling more connected than they have ever, is what I'm hearing. Um, this person views you as somebody who's independent, you know, able to care for themselves. You may actually have family or friend ties to this person, um, Gemini, as well. So let's see where the emotions are. How do you feel? about this person, Gemini. Sun card. As, as soon as I saw that, I heard Bruno Mars because I'm happy. Oop. Six of Swords, King of Pentacles. Nine of Wands. So there's a sense of, you know, feeling hopeful, optimistic, you know, going towards resolution, feeling more grounded, feeling more practical, not really wanting to, you know, have it out or have any conflict. I feel like you're in this place of surrender of, you know, if it doesn't come easily to me, it's not meant for me, you know, but also like letting your guard down, you know, when it comes to the connection. Maybe because you feel a little bit more solid in who you are and you've kind of moved past, you know, some things that were burdening you here. But I feel ultimately a lot of hopefulness, like optimism coming through the heart space. Um, warmth, this warm energy coming through. So this person's heart space, the three of swords. Seven of pentacles, ten of cups. Page of Pentacles, the Empress. Ooh. Why do I feel so exhausted today? Queen of Swords. Sorry if I'm out for my yawning. <laughs> so, this person has some serious battle scars, you know. Um, there's definitely some hurt here. Um, and I feel like Either they're working past it or they're trying to work past it, but it feels super heavy. Like, I almost want to fall asleep right now. Um, I feel like this person is trying to put their focus on family or the things that really, truly, emotionally fulfill them. But they get caught up a lot with thinking about or reliving or re-feeling something that really has hurt them. Um, and it causes a pause or a stagnant stagnancy in this person's energy 
But that's because universe, universe sometimes will put us in a stagnant phase so that we take better care of ourselves. You know, it's kind of like a timeout almost, <laughs> you know, where like nothing seems to be moving forward or changing because it's an opportunity for us to change self, to work on self, to heal self. And that's kind of where this person is being directed and then to try again, you know, so I feel like there is this kind of prickly energy here that's the best way I can describe it um that I don't know causes this person to detach a little bit now some of you it could be that you or your reaction to them or the way that you are sometimes makes them second guess or pause maybe um even though they want and do care about the connection and see the potential in it so take it as it resonates Let's see what the next outcome, likely outcome, will be then for Gemini. The Four of Wands, all throughout this reading, which is a union energy, by the way, but also highlights family. There's the Queen of Swords, that's you. Six of Pentacles. And the Ten of Swords. Yeah, that's that exhaustion. All of a sudden I just felt like, oh, God, I need a nap. You know what I mean? Like, be careful about over-exhausting yourself or overthinking something to your exhaustion. It could also be that there's things going on in the home or family or this relationship dynamic that's completely exhausting you. Over-giving, over-extending yourself. You know what I mean? Like, be careful about that. Um... It's a sense of like also, you know, ending that cycle for yourself. Like say you know that you've been giving more than you've been receiving and, and deciding to stop that energy flow, right? But take it as it resonates. Um, is this about? of swords wow this is super similar to the Aries reading so you're definitely getting perspective you know and there's some sort of equalizer I keep wanting to say that word coming through where it's like you know if this is your true divine masculine or partner or feminine if you're a masculine it's like the the karmic scales always get balanced, meaning when you're feeling exhausted, this person is picking up the slack, right? And when they're feeling exhausted, you're picking up the slack. And that's how you maintain an equal give and take in a connection. Um, but I don't know if there is that equality going on here because there's a lot of exhaustion showing up. Um, so maybe something you need to weigh out and ask yourself, Gemini, but... I feel like this person wants to give to the connection. So let me see most likely outcome for them. Eight of Pentacles. The strength card. Did I shuffle these? I know I did. It's almost I did. No way. No way. This, no. This is the same exact card combination I had in the Aries reading. Pretty sure their cross watcher also had these same or similar cards. Weird. And I know I shuffled them. There's the death and rebirth card. There, there's an ending. There's an ending to the confusion, okay. So, this person is working on their courage, their confidence. They have some choices to make, right? Now, some of those choices are big ones. But on the other side of that, they're looking to their future, even though at times it seems the future is uncertain, they are getting some answers and new perspectives that is helping them to feel more secure, right? 
in whatever it is that they're going towards. And then, boom, wish fulfillment, healing, um, an opportunity to manifest something that they really want. So I feel like this person was going from this state of confusion here where maybe even they had their wires crossed and was focused on the things that they don't have instead of the things that they have. But something is coming along, some sort of change or ending or shift here that is helping this person to reprioritize or reconsider something. And it's all in about healing. I almost heard it's all in their favor. Or they're trying to figure out how to make something go in their favor so that they can attain some sort of wish that they have here. Gemini. Something that they really want for themselves. And they don't know how they're going to get there. But spirit is trying to show this person the path of least resistance as well. The spirit is always giving us signals and guidance. And it's going to help clear this person's confusion up. Okay. And then there's some sort of rebirth or transition here. So, wow. Let's see what the guidance is. Oh my goodness, three cards. <laughs> let's see. You have trust, love, and synchronicity. Trust. While your logical mind is dictating a clear direction, your soul's inner guidance is urging you to follow an alternative path. The logical path may be one you consider safe and familiar, but you could be missing out on a boundless opportunity. Wow. That goes really well with the first portion of this reading. Maybe go watch that part again. Um, then you have the card of love. Love is the foundation of your existence, and you are worthy of receiving just as much as you're worthy of giving. While love can be a beautiful emotion, it is an energy that needs a balance. And then... Synchronicity. Are you noticing signs, signals? Didn't I just get done saying like spirit is always guiding you? Pay attention. Ask for signs. Then look for them. You know, play with it a little bit. All of us have guides, but because it's a law of attraction universe, not law of insertion, they cannot be of guidance to you without your asking of it. So ask the questions. Ask your guides to guide you and they will be right there with you the whole way. So, wow, Gemini, beautiful reading. I love it. Um, <laughs> zodiac signs that you may be connecting with or have in your own chart. I have Aquarian energy, Aries, Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, Sagittarius, Leo again, Leo again, Aquarius, Scorpio energy. Leo again, Gemini, and Taurus, Cancerian energy. But take what resonates, see what doesn't. It is a general reading. Um, also, please don't forget to hit that like and comment below. Please interact with my videos. Help me get back into the algorithm. Y'all did such an awesome job. Uh, somehow I fell out of the algorithm because, well, because I changed um, the way that I publish videos. But you guys did such an awesome job that it did help increase um, my subscribers and views. So continue to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Um, and also, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I do have content over there. I go live on Facebook quite a bit. You can check it out. All of it linked down in the description box as well as in the About section. Otherwise, I'm wishing you guys the very, very best. And until next time, my friends. Namaste.